Well, it's time to bring it on with your questions, and Pat is in the hot seat. Let's start with Rita's question. She says, with the upcoming Olympics, I always look forward to seeing the equestrians. When it comes to dressage, I notice some riders wear spurs. Does this hurt the horse, and why do some horses foam at the mouth? Are they in distress? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, uh, some trainers actually get uh, shaving soap and put in their horse's mouth because it, when the horse is on the bit, <clears throat> something underneath here, uh, you know, it gets more active and they have saliva and the saliva shows that the horse is on the bed. And so a little bit of foam at the mouth is, I just say they, they spray them with uh, shaving soap to get, to get that effect. Honest. Is that good for the horse? Oh, who cares? I mean, yeah. a little bit of shaving soap at the edge oh. of your mouth. I mean, I, I put shaving soap at the end <laughs> of my mouth, but it doesn't hurt anything. <laughs> but uh, people are concerned about uh, spurs and uh, they dressage, they use the so-called Prince of Wales Spurs, which is just a, a, a very, uh, th there's a dressage move with my horse. You see, I'm not hurting him any. But uh, he, he, he's, this is a, a, well, that's a passage <laughs> he's doing right now. But. Uh, <clears throat> and you have your spurs on. Yeah, but you just barely touch him. And that little touch, a sensitive horse, it, it uh, uh, you know. But they're more, it's more fun to ride them when they, they, but they get collected and you have to get them. I mean, all those moves, it, it, it's just a little, a little more sensitive, but they use the, the Prince of Wales Spurs <clears throat> is a nub about as big as my little finger mm -hmm. and it's blunt and it just, it's a little extra touch the horse feels. But it's, mm -hmm. Nobody's beating up horses. Good. All right. Well, All right. Ed says, I'm trying to learn and understand scripture. I heard a preacher say that when sinners are judged, that Christians will witness this judgment. So we will see loved ones that are not saved, sentenced to hell, and some Christians will know that they didn't try to get them saved. For this, there will be much pain and crying by the ones that are saved. Then the Bible says, God will wipe away their tears. Is any of this true, or have I heard it all wrong? That guy, I wonder where these preachers come from. There's so much lack of knowledge. Uh, the Bible says God will wipe away all the tears from your eyes, but the tears have to do with the sorrow you've had, the loss of loved ones, and the suffering and pain that uh, people have gone through in this world. But uh, no, I don't know anything in the Bible that says that we're going to sit around watching your loved ones getting thrown into hell. That's horrible even to contemplate. Yeah, that's horrible. But nothing Not in the Bible. Bible. Nothing in the Bible. Not in no the Bible. Way. All right, this viewer says, Dear Pat, I'm a Christian, but I like Jewish music. I know all forms of godly music is inspired by people to praise God. I don't know much about Judaism, but I enjoy the music, even though I don't really understand the words. I enjoy the passion behind the lyrics. Is it okay for me to listen to this music <laughs> when I don't understand it? <laughs> Where do we get all these rules? Is it okay to listen to music? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think Jewish music is wonderful. And, you know, they dance the whole run and they, 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 they clap and they sing. I mean, you know, the Bible says, then shall the maidens rejoice in the dance. I mean, there's this idea of dancing and singing and tambourines. That's all biblical. Well, and there's a lot of messianic Jewish praise music. Oh. That is very great. That's you know Beautiful. Paul Wilbur. Yeah. If you like Jewish praise music, Paul Wilbur is the well, place to go. We've had him at uh, every time we do the Feast of Tabernacles, but yeah. of course it's wonderful music. All right. John says you've talked on the 700 Club about the dangers of high fructose corn syrup many times. My question is: Is eating other forms of corn products harmful? Actually, not. Um, if you if you uh, uh, eat. Uh, corn and soybeans, you have a perfect protein with about uh, 24 uh, of the molecules of a, a complete amino acid. And I, I think, uh, you know, the, the uh, uh, Mexicans and others in South America have corn tortillas, and uh, the corn is very healthy, uh, especially when it's mixed with beans, um, frijoles and uh, tortillas. Very good. So they have the combination. You've got corn, tamales or tortillas, and uh, you've got frijoles. And the beans and the corn make a perfect protein. And so it's good nutrition. Making me hungry. I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Joyce says, when Jesus turned water into wine, was it alcoholic? 
Uh, the best I can gather it is, you know, the, the master of the feast said, uh, you know, a lot of people, they take the right gut and they wait till people get uh, all drunk and then they serve that. But you've kept the best to last. So you don't describe grape juice that way. So yes, it was, it was alcoholic. All right, Paul says, how do I ask for healing power? I pray, but I don't know if it changes things. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what you're doing, so I, I can't comment. I don't know what's in your heart or what's in the situation that you're dealing with. But the Bible uh, indicates you transmit power through the spoken word. You speak to the disease. You speak to the demon. You speak to the condition and command it in Jesus' name. And I think it's rather than saying, oh, God, heal this person, Oh, God, heal this person, and now give me the word to speak in the name of Jesus, be healed. All right? That's good. Helen says, Hi, Pat. I've heard that the spirit leaves our bodies when we die and that it can linger on earth for three days. Is there any biblical teaching to support this? Well, that, that was a Jewish tradition. And when you look at uh, Jesus at the tomb of Lazarus, he, he waited about four days until Lazarus was good and dead. Right. And so that was the idea <clears throat> that... Uh, uh, according to the Jewish tradition, he was hanging around for three days and then had left. So when Jesus did the miracle, it was an uh, extraordinary miracle. He brought Lazarus back into his body. Um, the Bible doesn't expressly teach that. If it does, I don't know where, it, where that, that's to be found. I don't know where it is. But that, that was the instance where it, it was demonstrated rather than taught. Yeah. All right. Well... Thank well, you. I was just going to say thanks for your great questions and as always, great wisdom from well, Pat. You're very sweet.